All right, so let's do some practice problems together. So a student investigates a sound wave with a frequency of um, 25,000 hertz. So this will be your frequency. Calculate the wavelength of the wave. You need to find lambda and the speed of sound is V is 330. So let's use a simple equation, which is V is equals to F lambda. And we want to find lambda. So it would be lambda is equals to V over F. In exam, you would be awarded um, one to two marks for doing this proper um, equation. Okay, so lambda would be V is how much? 330 divided by frequency, which is 25,000 hertz. So your answer would be that 330 divided by 25,000. So it would be 0 0.0. 132 meters. Now, this is an oscilloscope problem, and you should be familiar with how to solve these, okay, because they are most likely to show up. So, they want you to find the period, the frequency, and the amplitude. So, to find the period, a period is simply the time taken to complete one wavelength. So, how many grids are here? One, two, three, four. So your period T is equals to 4 grids into each um, square is 0 0.25. So it's 0 0.25. Since it is millisecond, please be very careful with this. It will be 10 to the power minus 3. So this is 1. So it will be 10 to the power minus 3 seconds. Calculate the frequency of the sound wave. So the frequency, the relationship between frequency and period is that F is equals to 1 over T, which means 1 over 10 to the power minus 3. So frequency is 1000 hertz. <coughs> Calculate the amplitude. So amplitude is the maximum height or maximum distance of a wave from the equilibrium line okay so it's this one so amplitude is simply two squares right this is one square two square so it should be two into since each square each y direction square is one volt it's two into one so it should be two volt all right so question three when the frequency of the Alternating current is 10 kilohertz. The student hears a sound. So when it was 10,000 hertz, right? Because it's 10 kilohertz. But when he increased the frequency to 25 kilohertz, which is 25,000 hertz, the student cannot hear a sound now, even though the card is still vibrating. Why do you think is that? It is because for humans, the upper limit of hearing or upper limit is... Okay, so our upper hearing limit is 25,000. Okay, so that is our audible range. So you should say that anything other than um, 20,000 hertz, humans cannot hear it anymore because our audible range is within 20 to 20,000 hertz. Now, so just a change the apparatus um, that would increase the loudness when the frequency is 10 kilohertz. So, as per my uh, lecture video, if you want to increase the loudness, what you should increase is increase your amplitude. Okay, that's how you can increase your loudness. All right. Describe an experiment to measure the speed of sound in A, and then you may draw a diagram to help your answer. To answer this question to get full marks, um, you can refer back to the lecture video that I was talking about. Since you can, it would be helpful for you to use a diagram all the time. So let's say you have a person here, and you have a wall here. You should be standing around 100 meters from the wall itself and you can use two wooden blocks to start clapping and record the time it takes for the sound to get to the wall and then travel back and 
to measure the time taken, you should be using a stopwatch. Okay, and since you already know your distance and the time taken, you can use the equation v is equals to d over t to find the velocity of your to find the speed of sound in air. Okay, that's how you can answer this question to four marks. But since it is giving five marks, please draw a diagram and mention that you should be using a <clears throat> you should be using a stopwatch. Okay, some of the keywords that you need to mention is that you should be using a stopwatch and you need to listen for the echo. You need to use this equation. Okay, so if you can include all of it, you should be getting around five marks. The Doppler effect occurs when there is relative motion between the source of waves and the observer. Now explain how the Doppler effect causes a change in the observed frequency of the waves. So there are a couple of things that you should be mentioning when talking about Doppler effect. So the first thing that you need to mention is your speed of the waves is constant. Okay. That's how you can find out the Doppler effect. The speed of waves has to be constant. And if your source is moving away, okay, if your source is moving away. So an example you can relate back to is, for example, you're standing here and then there is a police car with a siren. Now, if this car is going to move away from you, right? So the wavelength, okay, your lambda is going to increase. When the source is moving away, your lambda is going to increase. And by then, you can use this equation, which is V is equals to F lambda. And you know that if your velocity is constant, your frequency is inversely proportional to your wavelength. which means that when your lambda is um, increasing, your frequency is going to decrease. Okay, so meaning that when the source is moving away, it will give you a lower frequency. And that's how you can score three marks for answering about Doppler effect. Now, a person is standing 1,860 meters away from the site of a meteor and here's the sound of explosion 5.6 seconds later. Calculate the speed of sound in air. Fairly simple. This is your distance. And he hears the sound after 5.6 seconds. So this is T. Okay, calculate the speed of sound. All right. So what, e what equation are we going to use? We're simply going to use V is equals to D over T. So your distance is 1,860 and the time taken is 5.6. So it should be around 332 meters per second. You get one mark for writing down the formula. You get one mark for um, doing the correct calculation. Now, a scientist is standing a long way from the media explosion. Explain why he hears the explosion um, at a different time when you see it. Okay? Alright, so why is it that? Now, if there is a media explosion, like a kaboom, right? If there is an explosion, and if your scientist is here, so there will be two waves um, traveling towards him. The first one would be the light waves. Okay, it's because of the light waves, he's able to see the explosion. And it is because of sound waves. Okay, he'll be, hear, he'll be able to hear it. But the speed of light is so much faster than the speed of sound. That's why he will see the light, he will see the explosion first and then hear the sound later okay so your explanation should be light waves travel faster than sound waves okay so that should be your concept
Now, describe the relationship between um, the speed of sound in air and temperature. Okay. So the speed of sound will travel faster. Okay. So it will travel faster in in a hot air. Will travel faster in hot air molecules. So what you can say is that the speed of sound is directly proportional, okay? It is directly proportional to the temperature, meaning that if the temperature increases, okay? If the temperature increases, the speed of sound is also going to increase as well, okay? So whichever one you enter, you should be getting one mark easily. Now the diagram is showing two students who are holding a piece of strings with a box attached. Now the box has a buzzer inside. Okay, this has a buzzer inside which can move along the string and it's going to emit a loud sound of constant frequency. So know that you now your F is equals to constant. Now the box is going to move away from the student A at constant speed. So it's going to move away from student A at constant speed. Now, so you should be explaining why the sound student by A has a different frequency to the sound emitted by the buzzer. So take your time to think about um, what possible effect of waves can be causing this, okay? All right, so the only effect that is causing this is what we would call the Doppler effect, okay? By now, you should at least um, have a hint of what your answer should be. Now, if you know that this is about Doppler effect, now your job is to explain it, okay? So, the wavelengths are emitted at the constant frequency, all right? So that's the first thing. So what you should be saying is that if V is equals to F lambda, okay? And the box is moving away from student A at a constant speed, meaning that your V is going to be const constant, right? And the wavelength lambda is going to be increasing because let's think about it. If your buzzer is around here, meaning that the wavelength between the student A and the box has increased. And frequency will be inversely proportional to your wavelength. So you can also show this equation, okay? You can show this equation to further emphasize your point. So F is inversely proportional to your wavelength, and that is why as your wavelength is increasing, you'll be hearing lower frequency, all right? So that's how you can sum up five marks for your answer, all right? But always remember when you're always explaining about the Doppler effect, right? For every Doppler effect problems, understand that um, your velocity will be constant and you'll be using this equation to explain that F is inversely proportional to your wavelength and if your wavelength is increasing, F is going to be decreasing. Okay, So those are the questions mostly asked from the Doppler effect. Now, question 9. A rider speed gun is used to measure the speed of the moving car. You might have seen this in a lot of um, movies like Need for Speed. So the rider speed guns emit radio waves towards the moving car. So it's going to, um, it's going to emit radio waves, and the moving car it's going to um, reflect all the waves back. Now the detected radio waves it has a different frequency from the emitted radio waves. So the change in frequency is used to measure the speed of the moving car. Explain this change in frequency when the car is moving towards the radius speed gun. So what it's meaning is that, let's say if you have a car and you have a radar here, okay, if you have, you have a radar here, you'll be emitting um, a, a wave with a certain frequency, but when it detects the car and it comes back, the frequency is going to be different. So they're asking you how to explain it, okay? So this is fairly simple as well. This is why, because of the Doppler effect. 
So you would notice by now that Doppler effect is involved in many of your um, questions. Okay, so please go back to the properties of waves and try to understand what is the Doppler effects. All right, so the frequency is V is equals to F lambda, right? So when your car is moving away, okay? So your when your car is moving away, which is going to be what f is equals to f will vary 1 over wavelength all right so in this case your wavelength is going to decrease because this is how it would be there would be a car here and this is where your radar gun is and as the car moves on the car will be closer to your wavelength sorry the car will be closer to your can okay so at first it was this far away but now it is only this far away meaning that your wavelength has decreased which means that your frequency has increased okay so that is all your answer that you should be saying all right so you can use this equation to say that wavelength is decreasing okay because your car is approaching the gun and hence the frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength and that's why the frequency will be higher and you should also mention that the velocity will also be constant as well all right so by mentioning Doppler effect you're going to get a mark by mentioning that V is equals to V is constant you're going to get two marks and by writing down this um, relationship between frequency and wavelength, you're going to get three marks. And by summarizing your answer, you'll be getting the final fourth mark. All right, so that's it for some of the practice problems. And I'll see you again next time.